Good morning, friends. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. I hope you're doing well this morning. Please take a moment if you are here watching the video this morning to let me know in a comment. I am actually live today, so I want to make sure that's working for you, so let me know. Um, this morning we are going to be continuing our series called Why Church? We are looking at why community helps us grow in loving God, loving each other, and changing the world. Hi, Sue. Good morning. Last week, we looked at the first five reasons of why that was important. And after the video today, I will type all 10 reasons into the comments so you can look at those. But today, we're going to look at the next five reasons that being part of a church community is important. So the first, number six, is that community empowers our relationship with God. Hi, Denise. Good morning. Community empowers our relationship with God. In Proverbs 27, 17, we read, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. When we are in any kind of community and in a church community where we're surrounded by other believers, we can feel more empowered in our faith. And I think even as a community, for instance, tonight we have Holy Spirit Night, we can feel more sensitive to God's presence in our lives when we're together and we're worshiping together and praying together and being community with each other. There's something powerful about joining together, about being accountable to each other, and just witnessing each other's lives. And we need people, I need people, checking in on me, asking hard questions, uh, challenging me, and loving me and caring about me. So a community of faith is a great place to grow and be empowered in your relationship with God. Number seven, community helps meet our need for love. Romans 12.10 says, be devoted to one another in love honor one another above yourselves. So there's no denying that we humans crave love. We desire to be loved. And we were made that way. We were made to be loved by a relational God who longs for us to be in relationship with him. Good morning, Paul and Marianne. Welcome. But even more amazing is that God gives us the gift of each other as a way to meet our need for love. Now, this love that we're given is a really beautiful representation of our greatest friend, Jesus, and the love that Jesus had for us that was so large that he laid down his life for us. And we're called to love each other in community in this way, to be more and more like Jesus as we love each other. Reason number eight, church community is important, is that community offers opportunities for confession, which can lead to healing. And we read about that in James 5.16. It says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you might be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. So there's power in confession. Have you ever experienced the power of confession? It really gives us the chance to bring to light the things that might be holding us back in darkness. And within community, and especially in a safe church community, um, we have the opportunity to really get real with each other, to confess our sins, to break free from things that are holding us back, from living the best life God has for us. True community requires transparency, authenticity, and confession. Now at River Heights, we really, as a church staff, try to practice this. We try to let people know when we're up front preaching, 
you know, what our own flaws and, and failures and struggles are, what they have been, how God has helped us, and what we might currently be dealing with. Transparency is super important and vulnerability. And if you are looking for a place to grow in practicing these things, in practicing confession, I have an invitation for you. Celebrate Recovery here at River Heights takes place every Tuesday at 6.45 p.m. And Celebrate Recovery is a Christian 12-step group, but it's not just for folks that might be dealing with chemical dependency issues or alcohol issues. It's for any habit, hurt, or hang up that you might have in your life. And I don't know about you, but I think we all have those. Um, it's a place where you can grow in sharing your stuff, where you can grow in letting other people know what is truly going on in your life. And it's a place where you can receive encouragement, where you can receive prayer, and where you can see, receive healing as a part of that act of sharing and confessing the realness, the real things in your life. So if you're looking for a place to grow in this, CR is a wonderful place to do that. Our ninth reason that church community is important is that it teaches us to work through conflicts. 1 Corinthians 1.10 says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church, rather be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. So let me give you a guarantee. Anytime you bring together a group of people, conflict is inevitable. And conflict is really scary for, for some of us. Some of us try to avoid conflict at all times. And our first reaction to conflict is to run away from it. That might be going to a different church, just leaving um, so you don't have to deal with it. But it's inevitable in your home, in your workplace, um, in your friendships and in your church community that you're going to face conflict. But we're called to work through our divisions, to work through our conflict with each other in the community of God. We're asked to be united in spirit, which is not always easy and it's not always natural. And it requires us to lay down our right <laughs> to be right and to practice love and unity. We don't always have to express every opinion we have. We don't always have to have people agree with us on everything. We are called to unity, love, and the bond of peace in the body of Christ. We're asked to be united, and it's a humbling experience. It teaches us to lay down our pride, to lay down our desire to be right, to learn how to be appropriately assertive and to improve our communication. And you know what? We need each other, especially in the body of Christ, because it's within the messiness of relationships with each other that we are reminded of our desperate need for God. And I don't know about you, but it's in working out relational difficulties that I most have to rely on Jesus, that I most have to remember to forgive in the way I've been forgiven and to love in the way that I've been loved. So that's something we get to do together. It might be difficult, but it's so very important. And finally, number 10, community gives us the chance to forgive. First Peter 4, 8 says, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other for love covers a multitude of sins. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Erin. Thanks for joining me this morning. So this is our number 10 reason. We get the chance to forgive. And there's really nothing more beautiful than the picture of the gospel displayed through healthy interactions of, as a community of Christ followers. Within this community, along with conflict being inevitable, being hurt is also inevitable. We are bound to get hurt at some point by another believer in our church community. And we are guaranteed the opportunity to forgive in those situations. 
we get to feel what Jesus felt as he suffered wounds at the hands of people he dearly loved. We share in that suffering of Christ. He loved and then he loved them anyway. He loved the people that hurt him. He forgave the people that hurt him. This may be the hardest part of community, but it's the part that makes us most like Jesus as we both share in his suffering and we share in his capacity to forgive. Friends, every day we are called to be more and more like Jesus. And it's a lifelong journey and we work it out together in community. And that's one of the best ways that we get to practice these things, grow in these things, and expand our hearts to be uh, more in love with God, more in love with each other, and go out and share that love with the world around us. I'm going to close today like I did last week with Jesus' prayer for his disciples and for all of us that we're going to come to love and follow him um, forevermore. So this is from John chapter 17. And would you pray with me, please? My prayer is not for these disciples alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Amen. Friends, we are the reflection of Jesus' love to the world. How we treat each other, how we act together, how we forgive and love each other is what reflects God to the world. So go today in the peace of God and love him deeply, love each other, and change the world. I'll see you next week on Friday. Have a great weekend.